Hear now this reading from the Gospel according to John. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, to the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard and anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and believing in Jesus. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming up to Jerusalem. So they took the branches of the palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and said on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, You see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Palm Sunday has always been kind of a strange liturgical day. Because on the one hand, there's all this joy and celebration. We sing upbeat songs, the kids parade in with the palms, flowers are finally blooming this spring. But it's also the case that death kind of hangs in the air because we know what's coming this week. We know that we have to go through Good Friday in order to make it to Easter joy. This week, while reading an essay on healing by the Episcopal priest John Koenig, I encountered this statement. When we are very ill, we are brought to the place where life and death meet. For Christians, this place is the cross. Yet in the central mystery of our faith, the cross is also a prelude to new life. The story I just read today about this meal in Bethany is also one of those moments when life and death meet. And in this story, we are reminded how we, when we encounter those times in our lives, can bring healing to one another. So Lazarus has risen from the grave, and Mary and Martha want to celebrate, so they invite Jesus and his disciples and their friends, and they throw this party, and they're all there celebrating. And then Mary takes this nard, which this expensive ointment, which would have come all the way from India, and and uses it to anoint Jesus' feet, and then, quite scandalously, takes her hair out of her veil and uses it to wipe Jesus' feet. It is an act of overwhelming gratitude and generosity and love that shocks even those who witness it. So this is a story about joy and celebration and new life. But even in this story, death is in the air. Death is in the air partly because Lazarus has died And regardless of whatever else has happened, this is a reality and part of this family's story. For four harrowing days, 
They experienced intense grief. And yet now they are celebrating and joyful, but those memories mark you. They don't go away. And I think many of you know what that feels like. You've had those moments in your life when even though you may have survived the surgery, even though you may have recovered from the stroke, even though the cancer treatments might have worked and the disease is now in remission, even though you may have survived the accident, those memories still mark you. You went through that period of grief and doubt and uncertainty. And even if you can celebrate afterwards, those memories remain a part of who we are. Death also hangs in the air because Jesus and his friends are under threat. We were told in last week's story, as Jesus says he wants to leave and go back to Judea, the disciples warn him, don't do this. If you go, you're going to get arrested, you're going to get killed. And Jesus says he's determined to go anyway. And then Thomas so bravely says, we'll go and die with you. Then at the end of last week's story, after Lazarus has been raised from the dead, we know that the religious authorities are so angry that they begin to plot to kill Jesus. And then in the story I just read, we know that they're also involving Lazarus in this plot because they are so angry at him as well. This is a group of friends who are endangered, under threat. And it's Jesus who, of course, points out the elephant in the room. After Mary's great act of love and generosity, Jesus points out that it has another layer of meaning, that she has prepared his body for burial. So in this story, it's one of those times when life and death meet. So what can we learn from this story about what we should do when those moments happen? What can we do in those times in our lives. In that same essay on healing, Father Koenig writes that healing comes through mutual bearing of emotional burdens and the deep bonding of our relationships. Now, we Midwesterners are really good at prefer preparing covered dishes that we take to family members after a surgery or after a loved one has died. And that might be kind of old-fashioned, but it is, in fact, a deep godly act of caring. And it's part of the nurture that goes on in this story, this preparing the meal for each other. Simple acts of kindness in moments like these are wonderful and are themselves acts of healing and blessing. Another important thing is touch. You can never overrate the importance of touching. In the United Church of Christ Book of Worship, in the introduction to the service of healing, which we will perform in a few moments, the authors discuss the power of touch, and here's what they write. To allow oneself to be touched is an act of openness. To touch another is an act of acceptance in which a person transfers something of oneself to another. Love, affection, protection, strength, power, acceptance. Touch in the healing ministry embodies the embrace of God for the redeemed creation when in the mystery of last things, God will make all things new. Like I said, one cannot overstate the importance of touching when someone is sick or suffering, and you've probably been there, holding a hand at a hospital bed, hugging someone at a crucial moment, a pat on the shoulder. These are, in fact, tender gifts of blessing. But one thing I really like about Mary is that Mary doesn't just perform simple acts of kindness. Mary goes all out. Faced with life and death, she confronts it with exuberance. She takes out this expensive ointment that she'd probably save for some special day. It would be like you going and getting that expensive bottle of champagne that you've saved for some birthday or anniversary and drinking it before you went into surgery. In the face of death, Mary chooses life. She cannot change the course of events. She cannot prevent what is about to happen. But she chooses to celebrate anyway. And that, my friends, is the message I draw from this story today. When we encounter those moments when life meets death, 
let's choose life. Hope and faith and joy and family and friends all have healing powers. Let this exuberant act of Mary's be our model. Let's show gratitude through our love and our generosity, bringing healing for ourselves and for those we care about. So today, this story invites us. Let's choose life.